Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm molecular cell biologist, and I grow human cells outside the human body in order to study molecular and cellular mechanisms of various diseases, such as cancer or cardiovascular diseases, and to suggest the cure. And today, I'm going to tell you about what we have learned from a big experiment where we cultivated 1,000 human hearts, and then we broke them. Nobody was hurt during this experiment because we made all these hearts from a single human cell. Our body consists of billions of cells. And despite the fact they all look different and they form different organs, for example, this is lung, liver, here, heart, the brain, they share the same genetic information because they all come from the same single cell. The heart, for example, is a very special organ. It's special because it works very hard. It pumps blood, or thousands of liters of blood every day. And it's made of very special cells called cardiomyocytes. And the cardiomyocytes are the only cells in the body that do not get diseases such as cancer. All the other tissues or organs can be affected by cancer. You can have cancer of the skin, liver cancer, lung cancer, brain tumors, cancer of the eye, called retinoblastoma, but never cancer of the cardiomyocytes. The reason for that is because they do not divide. We are born with uh, very small hearts, which grow as we grow until they reach an optimal size. And then they stop. And this growth is because individual cells become bigger and bigger. So they don't divide. However, as a result of that, the heart is very difficult to regenerate or repair. If somebody breaks your heart or some of the, your cardiomyocytes die, the only choice for such patients is to have to wait for a heart transplant. So we thought, oh, if this, all cells share the same genetic information, can we take a skin cell in the body and program it to become cardiomyocyte and use this cardiomyocyte to repair broken hearts? Or even more, can we just grow hearts in petri dishes and when they are ready, we just use them to repair broken hearts? And these designer hearts will be perfect fit because they are made from our own cells and will not be rejected by our body. Is that possible? When I use here terms like reprogramming or programming of cells, if we program skin cells into cardiomyocytes, this term is normally reserved for computers. Yes, it is. And uh, we use this terminology because there's a big similarity between a cell and a computer. The cell has a small nuclei in the center where it stores all the genetic information, all the programs. It's not a very big hard drive, just three gigabytes, but it's enough to store around 30,000 programs. And the cell chooses to use around 1,000 of these programs, depending on what kind of function a particular cell will perform. So we have the hard drive. We also need a keyboard to switch on and off different programs. And the keyboard of the cell is the nucleus. Is the the keyboard is on the, on the surface of the cell, which is the membrane, which controls the programs in the nucleus. Uh, the, the cell membrane corresponds to the nucleus. We we'll only need to find out which key to press on the keyboard and to switch particular program. The signal from the cell membrane to the, to the nucleus is transmitted through a complex system of complex network, which we describe as signal transduction pathways, and they correspond to the motherboard of the computer, very much like signals from the keyboards are transmitted through motherboard to the processor and the hard drive. This uh, signal transduction pathway is a very complex network. A few years ago, we tried to draw a map of some of, some of them. It is quite complex, but we think we know enough now in order to press the right keys and switch on the right programs in the cells in order to reprogram cells. All we need to do is have cells that proliferate, for example, skin cells or fibroblasts, switch off the program for proliferation, and then switch on the programs that will make them first cardiomyocytes. And from these cardiomyocytes, we can assemble 
initially small hearts. And these hearts, they do beat when you keep them in the petri dish with a rate of around 30 beats per minute. They're very small and pretty. And the good thing is that we can put them and look at them under the microscope. We can look at the effect of various drugs on the physiology of the size of the heart, but you can also look at the effect of the drugs on individual molecules inside the heart. So you can zoom in with a microscope and look how drugs affect different pathways and if different individual molecules which we label with different colors. One such molecule is the calcium, which controls the heart beat and pulsate every time the heart will shrink. And we can make thousands of these hearts. We can produce mass production, we can make them in very small petri dishes. We normally use 96 well plate, which is the industry standard, so we can analyze them using the standard instrumentation. They are very small, they behave like normal hearts, and the beauty is that now we can study a lot of drugs on these hearts without using animal models, which causes an ethical problem, but not only that, normally before that we used rats, rats to study the effect of uh, cardiovascular drugs. And the, the rat hearts are different from human hearts. And not always the results are transferable. So, but these are nice, small, but still healthy hearts. And we wanted to study heart diseases. For example, one disease we're interested in is heart hypertrophy. This is a disease where your heart becomes bigger than normal. I know it sounds good to be a, a man or a woman with a big heart, but in a medical term, that's a death sentence. And very often that's inherited, can be as a result of another disease, such as diabetes, or could be self-inflicted. A lot of young athletes, which exercise a lot, lift heavy weights, they, initially their heart will respond by becoming a little bit bigger, which we call physiological hypertrophy, and later becomes a pathological hypertrophy, and these young athletes will die from a sudden death. We wanted to prevent that, so we wanted a model to study heart hypertrophy. I wanted to induce hypertrophy in these small little hearts, make them a little bit bigger. And we succeeded. We adding, creating the physiological condition of high hypertrophy, we made the hearts 20% bigger. And uh, we sliced through the hearts, and we saw that not only they are bigger, the cardiomyocytes change slightly. Normal cardiomyocytes are very well organized. They have one nuclei where the disease cardiomyocytes are bigger. They have many nuclei and the internal structure is disorganized. That's why they cannot perform their beating function so efficiently. So we're now using all this model system to test a lot of drugs, replace the use of animals, and we're already finding compounds that are preventing heart hypertrophy in this system. This uh, approach of reprogramming cells, making mini organs now is becoming very, very popular. The last one I heard was in the beginning of this week is from scientists from John Hopkins University, which managed to create mini brains. Again, for the same purpose, to look at brain diseases and study the effect of very various drugs on the brain. So what we have learned from all this big experiment, we've learned that our body have the tools to repair. By reprogramming cells, we can repair damaged organs. So in the future, drugs, medicines will not be just drugs. We can use our own cells as medicines. And we hope, and we hope that very soon, using this approach, we'll be able to find cure for heart hypertrophy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.